Hi, Steve Perro here, Agile Coach and Product Consultant for Version 1 Software. By this time, you're already familiar with the concepts of user stories and estimation. Well, I'm here today to talk to you about release planning. Release planning? Well, I thought Agile meant we were all done with Gantt charts and work breakdown structures and, and relax. While release planning is a critical part of our overall process, just as we've seen with user stories and estimation, there's an Agile way of doing things, and release planning is really no different. Now, I can understand why you might be frightened. Anyone who's participated in a traditional planning process generally knows that it takes a lot of time and effort and more than a little guesswork to come up with a plan that sticks. And despite our best intentions, history has an important lesson to teach us in regards to release plans. They're seldom ever right. You see, the problem is, is that traditional planning fails to recognize that software is inherently intangible. Being intangible, it's virtually impossible to predict with any degree of accuracy the realities that we'll encounter within a project of any size or complexity. This is where Agile is different. Rather than trying to fix the scope to drive the date and the costs within our triple constraint, Agile recognizes that software is intangible and adjusts accordingly. I think you'd agree that most businesses, to most businesses, date and cost are really the most important constraints. And coincidentally, these are the only ones that we realistically can control. So knowing that software is very dynamic, doesn't it make sense then to control the constraints that we can and to drive the scope and manage the scope to fit? Now, by this time, you should all be pretty familiar with the idea of velocity, you know, the measurement of team throughput on a sprint by sprint basis. Well, understanding velocity, it becomes relatively easy to manage our scope and to build a release plan. See, we'll know approximately how many sprints it will take by using our velocity to burn down or to complete the amount of work within our backlog. Well, with an understanding of priority, vision, and critical path, we can begin building our plan by scheduling work out of our backlog and into sprints all the way up until the date that's our fixed date that's established by our fixed schedule. If the number of, or if the estimated number of sprints exceeds the amount of time that we're afforded by our fixed schedule, then we need to manage our scope. So again, with an understanding of vision and priority, we'll look to manage our backlog by deferring selected stories out of our backlog and into different releases. Now I know what some of you might be thinking. Hang on, hang on. I, I recognize the scope might be dynamic, but I need all of my stories. Well, if that's the case, then the schedule-based approach that I just described probably isn't for you. Now, for those times that we do decide that scope is what's most important, then again, by using velocity, we'll determine the number of sprints that's required to complete the work within our backlog, and by using that, we'll estimate our release date. This is called feature-based planning. Whichever approach we take, it's really important to understand that at best a plan is only ever a plan. Dwight D. Eisenhower said it best. When preparing for battle, I find that plans are useless. Planning, while well, planning is indispensable. You see, release plans are important. They drive dates and they set a lot of expectations. If we're serious about making sure that we're creating the most accurate and meaningful plans, we need to understand that this isn't just a once and done type of activity. We need to make planning a regular part of our iterative process. We need to make sure that we're updating and adjusting our plans to reflect the realities of the projects. Only by doing this can we ensure that our plans are as meaningful, as accurate, and ultimately as valuable as possible. Well, that's really release planning in a nutshell. Thank you for your time, and remember, if at first you don't succeed, uh, then skydiving is probably not for you.